Hello, welcome. Thank you for clicking through to this video where I'm going to explain how this type of two-stroke carburetor works, basically explaining the fuel flow through the carburetor. And I hope by giving you this understanding, it will be easier for you to clean these types of carburetors, what to look for when you're cleaning, and making sure that they run as efficiently as possible when you've done so. I'm going to show you the role of these mixture screws now you set the fuel-air mixture. I'm also going to show you where the manual primer pump works. This is actually off a still strimmer. It's made by Zama, but in principle, the workings of these carburetors are the same for all two-stroke carburetors. Right, so I'm first going to take off this side here and that'll expose the fuel pump diaphragm. Here we've got the gasket and the fuel pump diaphragm underneath. When the piston rises back in the engine, it creates a suction here. And as it does so, it creates this vacuum inside on the top of the diaphragm here. And it makes this part of the diaphragm lift, just in the centre there. And as it lifts, it creates a sucking action underneath, back through here. And as that sucking action comes through there, fuel is sucked through, brought inside the veins in the block, then out through this one, which is on this flap here. So it comes underneath this flap and then down inside that little hole and that little hole is the one that goes into this little reservoir here so all the fuels now come into this reservoir when the piston comes back down it creates a pushing action there so it's blowing in air there creates a depression there pushes down all that fuel that was inside this reservoir now pushes out that way it can't go back this way because it would come back up here up through there again and then down onto that flap there and that would stop it going back so instead as the diaphragm goes down the fuel is sent this way through that hole there which comes out here underneath this flap and out and down into there that hole comes out there and the fuel then spills right down towards the metering lever and that's why we call this area here literally the fuel pump system because it's up and down pumping not to be confused with the primer pump that's the manual pump that goes on the other side for priming we'll explain that in a second there's a gauze filter there a little metal gauze filter and that normally sits inside there like that the way it does this and the way it keeps the fuel in the right areas is all to do with how the gasket is on the lid so the lid fits on like that but if we have a look underneath there's only so many places the fuel can go this gasket here stops it from overlapping and so it keeps the fuel in the right areas there so fuel is drawn in from the fuel tank into the main fuel inlet tube of the carburettor. The fuel is then taken in through the fuel veins inside the block of the carburettor and up through this little hole there. And that hole there is the one underneath that valve flap there. The fuel is then taken over into this hole, and that's this hole here. Then it's taken under a little vein there again, and then into this reservoir. This area floods with fuel. But the path of the fuel basically comes out of this hole and in through that hole. Then it goes underneath and through another fuel vein, and out through this hole. And that hole there is the one underneath this flap there. And once it comes out of there, it's down in this hole. And that's that hole there. Then it goes through another little fuel vein channel and then spills out down into this hole, which takes it down to the bottom of the needle valve. So out there and down through the strainer filter. So the fuel's gone down there and that is here. So the fuel's now come up to the bottom of this metering needle. This metering lever now can move up and down and allow so much of the fuel to come through whenever it needs to by this diaphragm, the metering diaphragm. This diaphragm now, that little area there on the diaphragm, touches this area there on the metering lever and pushes it. And it sits in place and it kind of works up and down like that onto the lever. So this sketch here is a side view of that. And what happens is fuel comes up to the bottom of the needle valve. And when it gets there, it can't go any further because the needle valve is fast on its seat, creating a seal. And the reason for that is because there's fuel already up here in between the carburetor body and the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm here. This being the metering lever, it pivots like this but because this fuel here it keeps the diaphragm up so that little spring there allows the back to stay up and allows the front to stay down that then pushes the needle valve onto its seat and the reason there's lots of fuel up here is because the engines are either using very little or none at all here's what it does when it uses a lot of fuel let's say we've opened up the throttle we've pressed the throttle trigger and it's needing lots of fuel so fuel's going in to the engine now what's happened here is fuel's left this area and when it leaves this area to go down into the engine it creates a vacuum and pulls this diaphragm downwards when it pulls it downwards it pulls down the metering lever pushes again 
against that spring there and that operates the lever that way. It lifts the needle off the seat and allows fuel to flow in. It's not really an all or nothing event. It's not really either like that or like that all the time. It's more that the diaphragm is moving intermediately. It's right up if the machine's in the stationary position and not working and it would be right down if it was full throttle let's say. If the machine's working at a medium pace then this diaphragm would be somewhere in a mediocre position allowing so much fuel in. So let's just recap the fuel flow and put it together now. So fuel comes in through the pipe, takes this journey here and spills down to the metering needle and then into the metering system and out into the engine. The needle valve's been removed in this image. This is how the fuel flows up to the bottom of the needle valve, floods this area. Fuel is taken through that little hole, that little hole and that little hole and we can see the routes it takes out. Each route ultimately ends up inside the inlet of the carburetor and mixes with air and that fuel air mixture is then drawn into the engine to combust. There's normally a plug that sits there, a Welsh plug, but I've taken that off to show you where the fuel goes. Now when the fuel does actually go in there it comes out there, there's a little hole there and it floods this little area inside here and it goes down inside those little tiny holes. And those little tiny holes come out down here, right back there. You can probably only just about see it but there's two tiny little holes right back there and that's where the fuel comes out on that one. They keep a supply of fuel for when the engine's ticking over. There's also a plug that should be here but I've took this off as well to show you where the fuel goes. At the same time fuel also goes down this little hole and when it does it comes out here. There's a little tiny hole just there and floods this little area and then goes that way. That way this is the main jet and it comes out there. There's two holes in here. One hole is connected to this outlet hole there and this little hole here is connected to another outlet hole down there. This is one of the mixture screws and this controls how much fuel coming down there will end up going in here with this fuel and this is the high jet. The more you screw the high jet out the more fuel will go in there and make the carburetor produce fuel more rich for the engine. The more you turn it in the more it'll block that hole off and the more lean it will be. What we find with this side is those two holes there ensure that some fuel goes in to the inlet to feed the engine on tick over. To set the mixture properly for the tick over we use this mixture screw here. If we have a look there there's a tiny hole on the side as well. This mixture screw can block that hole and if you turn this mixture screw out it moves it back and unblocks the hole. Forward blocks the hole. So if we turn it back on tick over it will make the engine run more rich of fuel because it's unblocking that little hole there and that little hole is connected here. That's where it comes out. If we turn that mixture screw out more fuel comes out of here and makes tick over run more rich. The more we screw that in the more lean tick over is. So that's where the air fuel mixture comes in with a two stroke. Let's have a look how the primer pump works. Inside there there's a valve and a little spring. If we look under at the primer pump there's a little hole there. If we look there there's a couple of valves. When the primer bulb is pushed down pushes fuel out through that valve and when it rises it draws in fuel through here. It creates a vacuum. As the vacuum is felt there by the primer bulb it draws up fuel. So it draws in there as the primer bulb rises and the bulb retains the vacuum. It has to seal. That's why if there's a split in the bulb the machine won't run. It'll draw in air. So it pulls up fuel when you're priming it and it's pumping fuel into the main inlet and flooding the area manually allows the carburetor to prime up with fuel and it supplies some to the engine. So when you push down and let the bulb rise it fills with fuel. When you push back down it pushes the fuel out of this one. It comes in through this one and out through that one and this one goes back to the fuel tank. What you do basically when you press it you make a nice circuit of fuel as you do in it. That's basically how these two stroke carburetors work. They aren't all identical but the principles are the same. Having looked at all the fuel flows going through these and them tiny little holes you can understand how important it is to really clean these perfectly when you actually take one of these to pieces. I'd like to personally thank you for watching this whole video through to the end and if you do want to watch the full version of this video then the link should be just here at the side. Please also have a look down at the description the information I've got down there for you and Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.